All right, guys, we want to use the slope deflection method uh, to draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and find the reactions to this statically indeterminate structure. So um, this is, if you count up the reactions, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have three equations of equilibrium. So this beam here is like fourth degree statically indeterminate. So this would be a beast to solve with the force method. That would just be a terrible way to do it. Um, but this beam is only one degree kinematically indeterminate and that means that we, there's just one reaction that we don't know a slope or displacement for because at point A the slope and displacement are going to be zero at C the slope and displacement are both going to be zero the displacement at B is going to be zero but we just don't know what the slope is going to be so it's only one degree kinematically indeterminate so that makes it a really good candidate for using the slope deflection method to solve all of this stuff all right, this is a, it's going to be a pretty long problem, so I'm going to split it into a couple of videos, I think. But in this first video, let's set up the problem. Uh, so the first thing that we do with the slope deflection method is we separate out the spans from their reactions. And then we label on the end moments for each of these spans that are virtually separated. So we would call this uh, MAB. This is the internal moment at point A. And it's on the span A, B, or I like to think of it, it's like the moment at A when we're, we're looking at B. Um, and then we draw on M, B, A. And then we draw on the other end moment here, so this would be M, B, C. And then the other internal moment at the other end of this span, which is M, C, B. Now I have very intentionally drawn these all clockwise. The slope deflection method works if you do these, if you put these on clockwise from the beginning. So always draw these on clockwise on each end. Don't do it the other way, um, and then you'll be fine if you're doing them clockwise. The other thing that we can draw on for now that that we won't need until we come back to this later in the problem is the shear forces. So I'll draw this on as VA. Uh, we'll call this VB1. This is the shear force just to the left of point B. Uh, this will be V. B2, the shear force basically on this span, which is just to the right of point B, and then the shear force here, uh, we'll call this VC. And then we can acknowledge that uh, there's going to be some reactions here. So there's going to be um, there's going to be something, I'll draw the opposite that we have from the shear force. There's going to be AY. Um, there's going to be a reaction here, MA. Um, here at BY, there's just going to be a vertical reaction. Right? Pins don't provide any type of moment reaction. And uh, and then at CY, again, we're going to have uh, at reaction C, we're going to have CY and then some other moment M, C. So we'll be able to solve for these later. But the important thing is at this step is that you've separated out the spans, you've drawn on the moments uh, as clockwise, and, uh, and then we'll be able to proceed on to the next section which is to redraw these spans again that we've isolated, but give them fixed end connections on both sides. So this is just a hypothetical case, but if you look in the back tables of a structural analysis book, you're going to see tables that are like fixed end force or fixed end moment tables that will describe situations like this where you have a beam with two fixed ends and certain types of loading, for example, a distributed load the whole way across or a point load right in the middle. And they're going to give you values here that they're called FEM. This is the fixed end moments. And so this one here is going to be AB. Uh, this fixed end moment is going to be BC. Uh, no, sorry, BA. This one is going to be FEM. Uh, this one is BC. And this one here is FEMCB. So these are the moments that you would be getting in the case of having a, a beam here that is fixed on both ends. And if you look these up, the uh, the fixed end moment that on uh, that's on the left hand side, uh, so of, of a a span here with a totally distributed load across it. So that would be F E M A B. Uh, this is going to be equal to negative W L squared, negative W L squared over 12 and the negative is because in actual in reality this is going to be uh, oriented the other way if you imagine pressing down on a beam uh, the reaction moments required uh, would be this one would be correct sense and this one would be opposite so it's actually going down so we give it the negative sign but when you're doing this uh, if you draw these on clockwise as well 
um, and then follow this convention where the left hand side ones are negative, then you're going to be just getting the right signs as we work through this problem. So FEMAB is negative WL squared over 12. Um, the fixed end moment of BA is going to just equal positive WL squared over 12. And then uh, it'll be a separate point in your table or a separate item in the table that you're going to find the situation where you have two fixed ends on a beam with a point load in the middle, but it will say that the left hand side is going to be equal to negative PL over eight. And then the fixed end moment of the right hand side, which we're calling here B, uh, sorry, CB, CB is going to be equal to positive PL over 8. So in our problem, we actually have some information here. Um, oh, actually, I, I labeled those as general. Uh, we should replace these with actual numbers. So I was planning to say that this each span was 10 meters. So that would be 10 meters. Uh, that would be 10 meters. And making LBC over 2, each of these half spans 5 meters. Okay, so when we now we have enough information here to basically plug in uh, we have we have W, the distributed load, we have that length, that's 10 meters, and, uh, and then here we have the point load P, and then the length here for this span would also be 10 meters. All right, so we finish that up, we put that over 8, maybe let's write that in blue so it's all nice. Um, now, the reason we calculate these is because they are part of our slope deflection equation, which we're going to apply twice for each span to get the moment, uh, so basically the moment AB and the moment BA, and then moment BC and moment C. B. So we basically, uh, we do this four times, we replace this, like every I with the um, with letter A and every J with the letter B. So that would be to solve for the moment MAB, or to get an expression for it, it would be equal to two times the EI of the section. Be careful because some of the problems here you'll have like, um, you'll have like maybe like two EI in one section and one EI in the other. So if that's the case, then make sure you double EI in the side that was two EI, for example. Um, and then you divide it by the length of the span, which is 10 meters, and then this would be times 2 theta a plus theta b minus this psi here. Um, this has to do with settlement of members. If your member, like, or sorry, settlement of reactions, for example, if like this reaction here at b like drops down, settles by a few millimeters or something, um, then this is where this is. But typically a lot of problems have no settlement, so this will just go to zero. And then we add in FEMIJ, so this would be FEMAB for the first case which would be negative WL squared over 12. So for problems that have no settlement, this uh, expression gets reduced to this slightly nicer version to work with. Um, and then the other thing is, before we proceed, is we want to take uh, some observations based off of the original drawing. So when we look at theta A, so we can right here, these are some of our observations. Theta A is going to be equal to zero even in the deformed structure because of that rigid connection. Theta C is going to be equal to zero. Um, at point B here, we have to have MBA plus MBC equals zero. These have to be equal and opposite because at this point, if these two moments weren't equal and opposite, this point would not be in static equilibrium and it would like rotate off into somewhere. But that's clearly not what's going on in these types of beam structure problems. Uh, so we do have this kind of compatibility equation here. We have MBA plus MBC has to be equal to zero. And in this problem, we're saying that there's no settlement of any of the reactions. So uh, we're gonna say that here, psi uh, for basically any anything, uh, ij, um, j, uh, that's all going to be equal to zero. So why don't we take a copy of this and then we'll bring it down here to where we're going to be working. And we'll just drop it right like that. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for video one. We have set up the problem. We've got our expression here that we're going to be working with. Um, we've got our observations here that's going to make a lot of stuff here cancel out. So join me in the next video. We're gonna go through part two where we're going to do a lot of the math and determine what all of the end moments are and actually end shears. And, uh, and then we'll go from there before we draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and solve for the reactions in video three.